Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles. And actually in this video, what we're going to do is uh, check on a couple things that I wanted to uh, address before effectively just moving over to doing like our main menu and things like that. I wanna kind of uh, look at a couple things. Um, and there was this one thing I noticed with our enemies. We need to actually make sure that the enemy's health is also in, uh, renewed when the scene starts. So I'll go ahead and hit play and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so as soon as that loads up and we'll get going here. All right, and so now we have our scene and we have our enemies there. And of course we have our health and everything there. All right, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to kill the spider. All right, so my spider is dead, right? And then I'm gonna die myself here. So I'm gonna let him kill me. And I'll, it's easier to show, uh, show you what I mean. Cool, so now the player is dead. All right, and it says remaining lives is three. That's because we gained a life. Kind of in the middle of that, so we'll deal with that later. All right, cool. So now if we go over to the spider, you notice when I'm close to him, it's not displaying his health. And that's because this particular enemy's health is pretty much gone. Um, he doesn't have any health. It hasn't been renewed. So we need to renew this enemy's health. Okay, and so for that to work or he won't never die and he'll be in our scene. And uh, now if I go over to this enemy, and kill him and then I'll let the spider kill me here all right and I already solved this issue on the on the on the red enemy here so I'll just show you so remaining lives goes down to two all right cool so we're gonna go and look at the enemy and as you can see his health is good to go and I'll show you uh, how I went about it. It's really just really simple, but it is something that just needs to be addressed. So I'll go ahead and hit play and let's take a look at our enemy. So if we look at dim and uh, select him on him, I have a simple trigger under mechanics and I have a trigger called renew health. And so that's all it does. It simply is on the start of the scene, just simply add a crazy value. Basically this was more than what it would be. So basically add this value to his health and every time it will just be full. And so we just need to do the same thing for this spider. All right, so I could copy and paste, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it from scratch. So I'm gonna go into mechanics. I'm gonna right click on mechanics. I'm gonna go to game creator trigger and I'm just gonna rename this uh, renew health. All right. And then on this, it's going to be on start, and we're going to do an action. And then this action, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of these numbers. And this action is simply going to change the stats attribute. And it's, we're going to go to game object, and we're going to drag the spider into that game object. We're going to select the health attribute. And then for the operation, we're just going to go set value to be 9999. Good. Uh, and that's it. And so that should do it for the spider. So now if we were to go and beat up on the spider, that should work properly. So we're just going to double check. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to the fight here and I will defeat the spider. Hopefully. I still got to work on his collisions and stuff, but we'll get into that later. Cool, so now the spider's dead, and let's go ahead and die by this guy. One more hit. All right, cool, so we're dead, and gets sent to our scene, tells us, communicates to the player how many lives they have left. And so now we're here, here's our little lives, so we're gonna go ahead and get that back to three, perfect. 
And so now if we go back near the spider, now their health is at full health and we can kill them again. Great, and then this guy should be good. Great, and so we can continue on. All right, awesome. And so I wanted to make sure that we took a look at that and let's go ahead and get some health because we are running low. Great, and so our health is full and this is a checkpoint. So now we have our checkpoint over here, but I want something to represent the checkpoint. I don't want to just have an empty space in a scene. So we want to give some type of indication that the player actually went near a checkpoint. So let's actually take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the checkpoint just so we can center it into our screen here. And um, what I'm going to do is use uh, U modeler. I'm going to go ahead and create something. So first, before I even select anything, I'm just going to create an object in our scene. So I'm just going to do a shift D, make sure nothing's selected, shift S. All right, and I'm just going to model something. So let's see how that's going to look. Let's see what uh, I'm going to put this on 0.25 for my grid. All right, and so I'm just going to model something here. And actually, that's not what I wanted. All right, let's see here. And let me turn off something here. I want to turn off the, I think the canvas is already off. I don't want to be able to touch the canvas when we're working in these with this tool. I think that's good. All right, cool. Uh, hopefully this works. If not, that's okay. And all right, looks like we're having that there. All right, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and model that. And then I'm going to zoom in and do something else here. So what I will do is do that. And what did I do? I just want to extend that out like so. Cool. And I'll also bring this out a little further like that. All right, cool. And then um, what I'll do is grab this. And I think I just created that. So what I'll do is grab that. <laughs> and let's see what else we can do. So I'm completely making this up as I go. Um, it doesn't have to be like perfect here. Uh, we'll probably change it later. Just want to make something that represents like some type of checkpoint. And so I don't want that to be so wide. So maybe I'll just make that look like that. Maybe I don't know. Let's see here. I'm going to change the snapping to even smaller. And I'll select these and move it in one and then select these and move it in like that and then do the same thing here and do the same thing here and we can change this later again this is just placeholder stuff right all right cool and uh, if you want to even go further you can do more so say this is like a, a checkpoint item and I'm just gonna put it like here and if I want it to be a little taller maybe and then I'll do something like this no nope, I'll just leave it like this no need to over complicate this at all now I also want to change the color, so I'm gonna go into my materials and then I'm just gonna change the color so we can see it. So I'm gonna to go to material, I'm gonna call it checkpoint, and then I'm gonna change the color of this material to something else, like um, maybe like, like this. 
actually orange orange is always a good color so all right we'll go there and then i'm just going to select this and make it orange like that all right cool all right so we got our checkpoint i probably changed that it's not very creative all right and then so now we have the checkpoint and uh what i want to do now with this is basically take this what is this this i'm gonna delete this and i'll just call this checkpoint and then i'm gonna move it where our checkpoint is and i'm gonna put this trigger inside that spot okay so now this space is representative of this object so now if we move the checkpoint we can just kind of do that and if we need to change the size or the space of the actual uh, trigger we can do that as well by just simply changing that trigger and moving it if we need to all right great all right so the next thing we might want to do is have something change like when you hit the checkpoint maybe there's like a color change or something to this object so let's see if we can do that so what i'm thinking is instead of the checkpoint being orange maybe it can be for now we can just make it some other color like like that like gray or something for now and then we can make another object inside here so we'll just do game creator not game creator but 3d object and we can do a a sphere for now we can do a sphere and this sphere is now inside or a child of this checkpoint and so what i'll do is i'll move this sphere somewhere near here and then i'm going to scale it down to 0.5 cool and so i want this sphere to change a color and so what I'm going to do is create another uh, checkpoint material. So I'm going to do checkpoint, and then we're going to say checkpoint uh, sphere. I'll just ball, whatever, ball for now. And let's see here. I'm going to make this to be the color of orange, right? So I need this to change color when this trigger is activated. Fair enough. All right, great. So what I'll do is go to the checkpoint and create, should I create another trigger or should we do it in here? We could do it in here. Let's see if we have anything available to us. So we can go to object and we can change texture. Can we change a material at all? I feel like there's a change in material. Where is it? Change material. So the material, change material, target renderer so the material we want is this checkpoint ball material and the object that we want to change would be i guess this sphere all right and so maybe that's how that would work so we can do that let's see if this actually works so when this changes to one it should change the color of that sphere all right hopefully it works all right, cool. So we got some things working here. So let's go over here. And so we're, we're pl say we're playing a game and we get to this. Boom. So now our sphere is that color. And so this is letting us know that this is indeed our checkpoint. Okay, great. All right, awesome. Now, ideally, uh, let's go ahead and check to see what happens when we die. Now, more than likely, we're not keeping any variable checks to say that that is the case. I think I think I was getting health when I was getting hit and so he didn't kill me all the way. So let's get killed there. Cool, so now I'm dead completely here. All right, so reduce remaining lives to two. And so we should go to that check to that area. Great, and so there it is. So yeah, so it's orange uh, steel, and that's cool. Um, so that's great, and so that just basically changes that sphere to orange, um, and that's 
I think that works for now. Um, I think I can already foresee some, I wouldn't call them issues, but things we're going to probably have to address. If, for instance, we have two checkpoints, uh, are we going to be able to change the checkpoint once we've hit a different checkpoint? So if there was a checkpoint over here, uh, would we want that checkpoint? Would we want to be able to activate a different checkpoint that's further along in the game? Um, that's going to probably come down to other other issues that we may want to address, like will we be able to even reach a different checkpoint once we've passed it? And that may come into the level design. So if, for instance, we, as an example, say we went all the way over here and we're on this level and we finally made it to this point and we hit this checkpoint and we passed this point, we could have something to where we couldn't even go back into this part of the level, uh, mainly just because we created it that way to avoid some other complex coding situation or whatever. So um, I just wanted to address a couple things and, and get this going. Um, what I want to do next is probably start creating some prefabs before we officially start doing menu stuff, just thinking this through. And uh, so I'll take a look at that here. So basically, we have our game manager and uh, the, remember, the goal here is the game manager is going to be in every scene that the player is in. And there's going to be certain things that need to be inside the game manager. Okay. So um, what I'm thinking is we can do is turn certain things into prefabs, like the checkpoint, for instance, is a prefab and so on and so forth. And so when we use them, we'll use them throughout different scenes and we won't have to recreate the wheel every time, right? So we'll do that in another video. Um, I just wanted to kind of address a couple of things in this video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Cool, all right, bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. To stay up to date on the latest 3D platforming tutorial, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support, you can find me on Patreon or of course you can hit me up on Discord. I like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on. Of course, thanks for hanging with me. Your support is always appreciated. As always, remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.